contextual points. The first is that the political economy of most African governments is based around its past, which is overwhelmingly rural. And so if you look at the structure of, of government and the parliaments, it is that reality which is reflected in terms of the political power. And that is somewhat out of kilter with demographic and population changes, the first. And the second point is that, by way of a generalization, but an accurate one, the majority of, of national governments are quite centralized with very limited uh, amounts of power and resources that have been delegated to some national government, be it regional or local. And both of these are, are critical for our discussion. Now, demographically, over the last 20 to 30 years, we have seen significant changes in the spatial profile of uh, African economies. And this is, in the first instance, part of a worldwide trend that we see gradually the world becomes more and more urban for a variety of different reasons. Um, each different in, in different continents, but just as Africa is largely rural at the moment, so was Latin America five or six decades ago. For a variety of reasons, they can be for conflict, for declining productivity in the agricultural uh, sector, for the impact of climate change, uh, but also for reasons of uh, so a big driver, of course, is, is perceived economic opportunity. Most people make rational choices when they decide. And so there's three ways in which uh, African cities are growing at the moment. And by cities, this is a, not a term, I'm not referring to size. And the three drivers are in natural birth rates. We always focus on rural to urban migration, but the biggest driver of, of the growth of cities is natural population growth. And, and very seldom do policymakers <coughs> talk about uh, population birth rates in, in different parts of Africa, some of which are quite staggering. And these, this is driving. Uh, so the first is birth rates, natural, um, in, in city. The second is urban to rural migration. And the third is urban expansion. As cities grow, they envelop and they take over land that was previously non-urban as they expand their footprint. Throughout Africa, the, the, uh, in terms of numbers, the, the largest uh, preponderance of, of growth is in small and medium-sized cities, what we would call secondary cities in terms of the hierarchy. And this is a, a critical point because only recently have development agencies begun to focus on cities, but they tend to start at the megacities, the metros, and the capitals, and pay very little attention to the system of cities of secondary and in fact tertiary cities that make up the national economy and are vital to connect as one single system. So that's part A. Part B, in all of our work, and we are a global organization, we work in Latin America and Asia as well as Africa, Middle East. In every single place we've worked, the single biggest and most consistent obstacle to uh, a rational form of urban growth is the non-functioning of the urban landmark <coughs> for a variety of reasons. It comes up every single time, uh, either because of the old meeting the new, uh, but very often because it's, it's a source of power and patronage. And where we work in slums, people look at it as poverty, but in fact for very many people it's actually big business. And a lot of money is made out of the poor. Um, really through the ways in which uh, land markets are controlled and managed very often without data in a very opaque system. This is a feature that comes up time and time again. It's consistent. So in the context of what I'm describing, uh, the big challenges would be the following. The first is a lack of decentralized authority. So most decisions about land markets and about city land markets are not taken at the city level but are taken at a national level. This doesn't lead to intelligent and rational planning. The second is, a, is a, a, a corollary of that, and that is most local government in Africa is unempowered. It is weak. It doesn't have the resources. It doesn't have the authority. And above all else, it doesn't have the human capital to actually manage. So I am one of the urban mafia who goes around the world saying cities this and cities that. The reality is most city administrations don't have the authority or the capacity to do what we all say they need to do. And this is a structural problem that I don't believe uh, either national governments or development agencies have, have really got to focus, focus on correctly. Yet, the third is that typically most governments, no matter what they say in speeches, 
are by default certainly anti-poor uh, in their behavior and, and in many cases in sub-Saharan Africa, anti-urban in their, in their policies and their preferences. And all of these have, have spatial consequences in the way in which cities are growing or not growing. And the last is, is, is to look at ourselves in the mirror. The development community has had a, a, a spatial blindness, which it sometimes overcomes with a, 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 a nod towards something called the urban-rural continuum, which is the, the cheap, the cheap uh, way out of actually addressing the single challenge, which is poverty, which is spatially blind, land markets, wherever they are, need to be addressed. And of course, one economy has different elements to it, both urban and rural. And we have, as a development community, operated in silos for far too long. And that's why I'm so delighted <coughs> to be here. So the net result of all of this, and, and wrapping up very rapidly, as African cities, small and medium-sized, grow, most growth is unplanned and it's informal. In fact, the, the number one planning driver in African cities are facts on the ground which is people moving in or expanding their, their neighborhoods. There is almost no example of forward planning, anticipating urbanization, and making preparations now for what is almost, what is certainly going to happen. The second, and this is easy to say, but you need to unpack the consequences of this, is a huge mismatch <coughs> between jurisdiction and functionality. And that is that there's uh, most local authorities don't worry what is behind their legal boundary, which is why we're saying think about 20 to 30 years ahead. And so you, you end up with a, a set of no rules applying just outside the jurisdiction of the local authority, and this is basically urban growth that is going to be on the balance sheet of that local authority as a contingent liability. Uh, the fourth or third, I've forgotten where I am, absolute lack of data. There is no disaggregated data at a local level to be able to compare between cities and within cities. And this is also particularly important in respect of gender, which is a major feature in terms of access to tenure and, and property rights. So we're leading to, as always, a huge number of short-term mistakes with extremely long-term consequences. We're locking in uh, spatial inefficiency in, the, in the, the growth of African cities is not efficient at all and is going to be a long-term consequence most obviously in transport in, and for the urban poor access to economic opportunity and services but very often the lack of planning or the parallel markets that exist in terms of access land means that the urban poor end up on the worst land in terms of its risk for man-made and other disasters or natural disasters and so every time there's a flooding or a landslide by and large, it is the poor that get whacked because of, that is the only land in which they've been allowed access to. The, the impact on the urban environment are, is, is extraordinary. And all of this uh, lack of planning and lack of integrated planning leads to and continues uh, a, a level of, of social exclusion. That's a very rapid, I've, I've come in on the negative angle. There are good examples of national and local governments that have seen this, that are negotiating with urban poor movements and, and releasing land and rethinking how they provide services. But we need a sea change in the way in which we look at access to land, access to services, and the growth of African cities. But at the moment, it's not looking pretty.